Okay, so <clears throat> good morning. I'm Giulio Ferrari, and uh, these other people are the collaborators um, on, on this work. And uh, the work has been mainly made in uh, Modena uh, between different institutions in Italy. Uh, basically, what I want to present you is uh, um, the model for a real sample that are um, core shell nanowires. I will uh, show you the model uh, we use to simulate uh, uh, the results uh, where we apply a modulated magnetic field. I will show you the results and the emergence of aronov bohm uh, oscillations. So first of all, since this is a broad audience, I tell you something about nanowires. So what are nanowires and a brief history of nanowires. So this is the first paper where nanowires were, uh, the growth of nanowires were reported. So we have a um, semiconductor substrate. We put a um, catalyst on top of the semiconductor and by uh, throwing uh, atoms of the same semiconductor under the drop of gold, in this case, the nanowire grows. And this was made in 1964 and then in 30 years uh, this is the re results uh, which have been obtained. But nowadays we are able to grow uh, better samples where we can control the position, the size of the nanowires and also the orientation of uh, the nanowires. And uh, most important for, for, for us is that we can modulate the growth of the nanowires in a way that we can change the composition of the nanowires while we grow it. So uh, it is possible to have quantum dots, since this is a one-dimensional system, then modulating it we have uh, zero-dimensional um, systems. But what I want to um, focus on today is the modulation, the radial modulation. So you have a nanowire that is the core, and then you can grow different semiconductors uh, around the core. So you have shells of different semiconductors around the, the core, as shown here, in a way that the carriers, the electrons, are confined in one of these shells. So you have a two-dimensional system, a two-dimensional electron gas, uh, with the prismatic shape. So you have the, your electrons in, on a 2D uh, shell around a core. And this is the system we want to model. So, okay. so here are other examples of the same system. And here are uh, two of our, uh, of our models. We have made a model for the prismatic uh, sem uh, core shell nanowires. But what I want to present to you Today is something simpler that is a cylindrical model, but that allows us to apply a um, magnetic field, uh, a homogeneous magnetic field, but also modulated magnetic field like uh, this. Uh, these systems are important, and it's important to underline that um, the dimension of these systems allows us to see quantum physics because the radius of these um, nanowires are or of the order of tens of nanometers. So they have the right dimension to explore quantum effects. Uh, on the two, so we can consider these two dimensional systems. Uh, for example, carbon nanowires, single wall carbon nanowire, are very much smaller, so they are basically one-dimensional systems, while here we are able to study these as real two-dimensional uh, systems. What is common in, uh, about these two systems is that the surface is not flat, but is curved. So we have a two-dimensional surface that is curved. And if you want to study the dynamics of, elect of carriers, of quantum particles on curved surface, you have to be careful since this, surf this two-dimensional surface curved is embedded in a three-dimensional space. So the dynamics is not uh, so obvious. And this has been studied since a long time, I would say 52 years, uh, starting from the um, uh, paper of uh, uh, David and then uh, going on until the uh, last uh, um, formulation of uh, Da Costa of almost 30 years ago. And the important point is that if you consider the surface curved in a three-dimensional space, what appears is that you have an effect due to the curvature. So this last term here on the corner here, so this is the Schrodinger equation, normal Schrodinger equation, including the metric tensor, but it's just the Schrodinger equation. Then you reduce it to a two-dimensional surface. 
uh, by a formulation explained in these papers. And what you have is that you have an um, effect due to the curvature of the surface. This is true for uh, the dynamics uh, on curved surface without fields applied. If you want to apply a field, it's even more complicated because once you apply a magnetic field, of course, maybe that since the mm, magnetic field acts on the velocity and uh, maybe you have an interplay between the curvature and the velocity. And uh, so you have to develop again uh, very carefully the, 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 the theory. You start from the Schrodinger equation again and then uh, by the pair substitution you include the magnetic field. And um, so you can see that there's a connection between uh, the dynamics given by the, the, um, this operator and the magnetic field. And then you uh, do again all the derivation that uh, have been shown before. And what we obtained uh, just last year is that this is the result. There's nothing <laughs> to understand apart the fact that choosing the right gauge, you, you can demonstrate that um, the, the magnetic field and the curvature act, act separately. So you have an effect due to the curvature and an effect due to the magnetic field, and they don't have an interplay. But this is true only if you choose a particular gauge depending on the geometry. If you do not, do not choose the proper gauge, you have an interplay between, or at least in the formula, of course, then. Uh, this is, uh, we, we show that choosing the right gauge, you can demonstrate that there is not an interplay, bet physically an interplay between the two facts. So we have developed the, the general equation for any curved surfaces with electric and magnetic field. Electric field is not a big problem. The big problem is the magnetic field. And we want to apply it to this simple geometry that is a cylinder. So we have uh, nanowires, we model it by a cylinder, and what we do, we apply a modulated magnetic field. So you have a magnetic field perpendicular to the axis of the um, cylinder that is modulated uh, specially. And um, here you have the, 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 the proper choice of the gauge and then the Hamiltonian written here. And um, what happens is that you have two uh, parameters that uh, drive your dynamics. One is the ratio between the radius of the cylinder and the uh, wavelength of the modulation. So this uh, determines your, your dynamics. And the, uh, let's call it uh, uh, like a coupling co constant between the field and the motion of the electrons. That basically is the ratio between the magnetic flux through a plaquette here and uh, the, 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 the flux quantum. And um, so we can simulate this equation. And uh, these are the results. Here I show you the uh, density of states as a function of the magnetic field applied, the intensity of the magnetic field applied, and the energy. So what we see is that the varying the magnetic field, you have energy levels that oscillates. They group into braids, and they oscillate. And the oscillation is the Aron of Bohm oscillation of energies. So basically, you have quant uh, fluxes piercing the, your, uh, your um, plaquette through. Why? Because if we look at the uh, states, this is the um, uh, modulus of the wave function on the tube. What you have is that your wave function has this shape. So is concentrated in four dots. Let's call these four dots. And then these dots are linked by uh, regions where the wave function is different from zero. So basically, you have a, a ring that is not a ring because it's more or less squared, and in a region where, you, uh, where the electrons cannot go, where the magnetic field goes through. So basically, Aaron of Bohm uh, configuration. And varying the, magnet the intensity of the magnetic field, you see the uh, oscillations. So here I've shown you also um, slices through the density of states to show that varying the magnetic field, we have a modulation of a change in the density of states of, uh, of the system. You can uh, change the, um, the radius of the nanowire, of the, of the shell of the nanowire, or the modulation of the field. And what you obtain is uh, that your density of states changes, but you still see these uh, uh, oscillations. Uh, if you take, let's say, um, you keep constant the 
special modulation of the field and you increase the radius, what you have is that you basically you have strips. Otherwise, if you uh, decrease the radius of the uh, nanowire and you keep constant the modulation of the field, you have rings around uh, the nanowire. But they stay in these regions where the component of the magnetic field perpendicular to the surface is zero. So we have seen a lot of rings built by lithography. Here, the interesting thing is that once you are able to grow these core shell nanowires, you don't need uh, additional lithography on the system. What you need is a field that varies in the, in the space, so, of course. is an alternative way of uh, creating um, an iron of uh, bomb ring. Uh, just a couple of considerations about the symmetry, because you have seen, well, you know that uh, if you do, if you uh, consider the oscillation of the energy in a, in a ring, I mean a ring, uh, uh, a round ring, what you have is that the energy oscillate like uh, this, okay? So you have a continuous uh, uh, spectrum. While here you see that we have gaps between four um, levels oscillating, and this is due to the symmetry of the ring, because it's not round, but it's basically squared, and we have shown this on prismatic core shell nanowires where we apply a field along the axis, and we have shown that the energy uh, groups in uh, bra braids where the number of levels oscillating depends on the symmetry of the system, and this is true also uh, for these uh, systems. This is not something uh, completely new, because there are other systems which have been studied by other people, other groups, uh, where the symmetry of the um, um, wave function determines the number of levels that oscillate. This is a self-assembled quantum ring where you have, uh, where the wave function has this shape where you have two lobes and the, uh, wave, the energy levels oscillate grouping in two. That is exactly, you can see that these two uh, results uh, resemble each other, so it's exactly the same system. This explains also why the energy grows, because here you can see that the energy uh, always goes to zero. Why here the energy grows? Because you don't have really a one-dimensional ring where the uh, particle is completely exclu excluded by the, the, the center, but growing the, the, the magnetic field, the particle tends to go into the center, so the energy grows. When you apply a magnetic field, the other thing that appears is Landau levels, and we have Landau levels in our systems. So I removed uh, the density of states, I just left the uh, energy of the ground state to show you that the, here we have the iron of Bohm oscillation, but at some point in our spectrum appears that these energy levels that grow linearly. And these, is, these are the, um, energy st the energy corresponding to Landau states, this is the energy of a Landau state, uh, let's say, without the modulation, but with a constant magnetic field. And we can show that these uh, energy levels correspond to wave function located not where the field is zero, but where the field has its maximum. So these Landau levels uh, correspond to, 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 um, to states where the wave function locates in dots uh, in this region where the field is as its maximum. So, that's basically all. Maybe you think that these uh, curved systems are uh, exotic, but uh, they have been built in different uh, shapes. Uh, you can see these pictures also in a poster here at the conference. So, you, uh, cylindrical system, real cylindrical systems have been built. Uh, there are, and we have studied the, 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 this system in different configurations, also with a tilted magnetic field. Uh, systems where you have a Y junction have been built and we have done some simulation on the transmission on the dynamics without magnetic field but just to show the effect of the geometry of these systems but you can build even more exotic systems. So that's all. What I've shown you is that we want to simulate real systems which are core shell nanowires where the electrons are confined in one shell, in a two-dimensional shell. And I've shown you that which are the uh, formulas that you have to use, the, the right Schrodinger equation that you have to use to simulate this curved system with magnetic field. And I've shown you the results where the electrons, the carriers are confined 
in Aaron of Bohm uh, rings by the field itself. So that's all. Thank you. Well, we, we, we didn't put the spin orbit interaction now. Just, it, this is by now just a single particle uh, simulations. The, the, the step we are making is to consider exciton on this system, so um, electron all uh, pairs on the system. But we didn't put the, the, the spin orbit interaction up to now. Maybe another step. And there was some controversy over an additional term related to the curvature scalar. I was wondering if you, uh, if you came across that and had to deal with it. You mean uh, 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 so you, this one? You didn't have it in your, so you've got your Schrodinger interaction. Yeah. Have, that there's a sort of potential term that he has in his uh, form that relates to the curvature scalar. I yes. was wondering if you were. Uh, yeah, yeah, we still have the, the, the term uh, related to the curvature, yeah. but. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know that, uh, <laughs> that, that that's the point. Uh, OK, the, the derivation has been made uh, formally correct for quantum mechanics. The point is, can we show an effect related to this uh, scalar poten potential? Our, our answer, um, that's the reason why we simulated this system. Because this system uh, can be a key experiment to show if this scalar potential due to the curvature is real. Or, or not. So here you maybe mm, in these systems, the, the system that I've shown you, maybe there, are, there is not the crucial experiment, but, but maybe this one is, uh, is the right system to, to show this. So. Okay. Second,